YouTube, how are we doing today's video? We're going to run through three hip hinge variations and how to do them and where you could potentially have them in your plan and where you potentially wouldn't have them in your plan. So the three movements we're going to run through is the RDL, the stiff leg deadlift and the conventional deadlift. So firstly, we'll jump in. RDL. The beauty of the RDL is the range of motion is less than either deadlift. Deadlifts are from the floor. RDL is not. So that's the big difference. What is a deadlift? What is an RDL? RDL does not travel to the floor. So it's a lot more load at all times going through the body. Other thing with the RDL, the main reason we would consider the RDL versus a deadlift is where we're trying to manage two things. One, overall fatigue that accumulates from a deadlift on the floor versus RDL. RDL is less because there's less muscles being worked and less range of motion. And also in terms of what muscles are you really trying to target? So where would you put the RDL in? Is if you're really trying to hammer in your hamstring and glutes and not necessarily your back. So in terms of programming these in, it can be a really easy way so put a big movement in, which moves a lot of kilos through the glutes and hands versus a machine. And the thing with the machine is generally, it's challenging what's known as the shortened position, not to get too optimal. Hamstring curl, we curl, it gets harder as we come in. Whereas with the RDL, it's the hardest point here. So it's a really unique challenge for your glutes and hands. So we'll just go through. And so, so I'll give you a couple of touch points to consider with your movement as well. Gen generally, I'd recommend doing this from a rack first. So you're in a nice set position. Go from there. But as we're doing all three, we're just going to chill here. So with the RDL, so we're going to be starting in this position here. Now, what we want to be making sure we achieve in terms of where we should be feeling it is, of course, the hamstrings, but also the glutes. So we want to allow for a natural slight bend of the knee. But from this position here, what we should be thinking about is pushing the hips back. And if we watch where the bar is, the bar is glued to me at all times. In terms of how low can you go, until this back starts to round. So for me, my RDL would be here. So I'm in a really strong position, my back's flat, pushing my hips back, I'm feeling it in my hamstrings, I'm squeezing my glutes. What I want to try and achieve with all my hip hinges is my shoulders, to be a little bit further back from the bar. So I'm using my own leverage to pull. From here, we come up slow and squeeze from here. As you get more confident, you can speed that rep up a little bit. So, RDL boxed off just like that. Now we're going to move on to the stiff leg deadlift next. And why would we consider the stiff leg versus the conventional deadlift? So when we're doing the stiff leg, we're really trying to literally keep the leg from doing anything other than contracting. So the stiff leg in particular is going to be really huge mass stimulus through the hamstrings, through the glutes and through the back. It's a lot through the back as well, versus the deadlift, where we get a little bit more of a bend. So we're gonna get a bit more drive through the hips, drive through the quads. And because of the position that the conventional deadlift puts you in, you're gonna find it's doing a little bit more of the lower back. Whereas if you do the stiff leg effectively, efficiently, you should find that it actually hits the whole back a little bit more. So we're going to the stiff leg now. So when it comes to your stiff leg, the absolute priority is can we keep these legs stiff whilst keeping good posture? So you've got to find the range. So you see here, got the blocks here. Nothing wrong with using those. If you're trying to do the stiff leg, and that's as far as you can get with good posture with the legs being nice and stiff. From this position, you want to think you're pushing hips back and up. So we're keeping it locked here. Get those shins right up to the bar. 
gripping the bar, squeezing the lats back to get that back engaged. From this position, good posture, legs stay stiff. So if you create too much range with the bar, so like too low, you'll find this will happen or this will happen. So just practice with just the bar to really see what's the most amount of range you can get whilst maintaining those cues. Stiff leg, box stuff. So lastly, onto the conventional deadlift. So for this, we're trying to just think, what's the strongest possible position we can be in? And just ripping that way up as best as we can. So we keep it on the blocks. Again, blocks can be a useful asset. If you can't get into your conventional deadlift position, which if we take a look here, we have a bend through the knee into the hip. The back is matching pretty much that angle. Just be, in, be from the blocks to be safe. If you have to go into this position, I would just elevate the blocks. So the deadlift is all about leverage. This is the same with the RDL, same with the stiff leg. We want to use our own body's leverage to move the weight as much as we can. So if we use the analogy of like, imagine you're, you're pulling weeds out of the garden. In order to get those weeds out, we'd grip and we'd lean back in order to move the load. So keep that in mind with your deadlift as well, right? And how we initiate our own leverage to move the, the load back comes from the lats. As soon as you think straight bar, pull down, you're going to start using your own leverage naturally. It's just going to pull you back a little bit. As I mentioned earlier, before you end up pulling, try and bring the shoulders in line or behind the bar. So straight away, you know now you're using your own body weight to move the load. If you have your shoulders in front, you're almost working against just solely gravity with no leverage. And you'll find that you'll be missing out on a load of load of potential performance with any hip hinge you do. Leverage is such an important part of it. That's why the heavier the individuals in powerlifting, the more they can lift as well, right? So conventional, benefits of con conventional in your programming, all round hypertrophy of the back, really moving as much load. We're gonna be using the lower back a little bit more just naturally for how this position sort of takes us. And a good opportunity for a little bit more of a hip drive as well. So let's say you wanna build your back up, but you're not wanting to put as much emphasis on the hamstrings, whether that's from a muscle, like muscle goal point of view or a fatigue point of view, then that's when you would consider the conventional over stiff leg or RDL. So as I mentioned, we bring, we get the lats involved, tight position, leaning back, pull up from here. And there we go. RDL, stiff leg, conventional. If you found it useful, let us know in the comments with a little like, and I will see you in the next one.